So thank, thanks, thank you, Jackie. So what I was talking about is uh, today is, uh, I mean, the, the meetup for today has been made possible by a collaboration between Nairobi R and R is like this, Nairobi. And uh, what you can see on the screen now is uh, Nairobi R uh, co-organizers. We have Christopher who is going to be presenting for us today. He's a data manager at Cambridge Welcome Trust. Then the second one is me, I'm a statistical programmer at FASTA. And that is uh, Keegan Tembu, who probably is not with us today. He's a senior data analyst. And for the one is uh, Shermi Kariuk, most of you know, uh, she's uh, one of us. She's a senior data analyst. Uh, on the next slide, uh, we have the uh, our ladies organizers. Uh, Jackie, please, next slide. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, we have our ladies. Yeah, yeah, these are the co-organizers of our ladies. We have Lucy Joki sharing the screen now. She's a biostatistician. And then Margaret Wanjiro, the financial risk analyst. And then Fed Musili, senior data analyst. And, and, and again, Shermit Kariuki. So Shermit Kariuki is both in Nairobi R and, and R and this organization. So she's a senior data analyst, as I said. So welcome all again to this meetup. And um, uh, today, as I said, the next slide is uh, Christopher, who is going to be taking us through the uh, meetup for today, the training session on um, using uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, she, she, I mean, Christopher Maronga is a data manager, as I said, uh, from Cambridge Welcome Trust, and he's be take, he'll be taking us on databases in R. Um, he, he's um, experienced in uh, L research with uh, approximately seven years in health, so he's very experienced. Let me, in let me introduce Christopher. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, Jackie, you can go ahead. Yes, I can hear you. I can't hear you, Jockey. Are you? Are you having technical difficulties? Maybe. Type in the chat, or I'm the one who's off. I think Jackie might not be speaking, I don't know. I think she's dropped out. Oops, we are sorry guys for the technical hitches. Um, <sighs> Chris, um, yes, uh, I'm here. So, please, please go ahead and uh, start, introduce yourself, and just um, share your screen. I hope you can share your screen. Okay, um, so, uh, tell us I, about I, your amazing. Years of experience working with R yes, yes, yes. and how it has been and what you want participants to take away from this session. Okay, so I'll just share my video and uh, I'll share my screen as well. Um, but at some point, I'll switch off. I'll switch off the video as I as I uh, focus on the on the coding part. So uh, I'm not sure what you're seeing. Are you able to see my? Yes, yes, working with database working with databases in R, the PDF file. We are on the okay. So um, um 
So maybe before before I proceed, uh, I'll request maybe John uh, Mutiso. Uh, maybe I could take I could give back the host rights to John Mutiso so that I see, I see people are still continuing to join, and I don't think I'll be able to multitask. Uh, I think I can. I'm 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 being able to to admit. Yeah. Okay, great. So, okay, so uh, today uh, I'll be taking you through uh, how you can work with databases from uh, within R, and uh, a little bit about me. Um, so, um, I want to switch the video off. Sorry. Great. So. Um, so I'm a statistician by training. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in mathematics from JQuot. And uh, just recently, I submitted my thesis uh, for an award of master's in statistical science uh, in Strasbourg University. So uh, my profession uh, has largely been on health research, data management and analysis, uh, with a cumulative of uh, about seven years in, in that field. So uh, four of which uh, were spent in the clinical trials and reproductive health studies uh, at Thika. Camry CC at Thika. So um, while there, I think uh, that's when I, I grew this uh, skill of uh, uh, database uh, administration, uh, designing, and uh, yeah. So I worked with uh, uh, a lot of relational database management systems, and I designed a lot of them while I was working at uh, Thika Camry CCR. So uh, in 2017, I joined Camry Welcome Trust as a network data manager. So here, I was uh, basically managing data for a very large uh, cohort, observational cohort, which was, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, looking at malnutrition and mortality in children. So um, uh, again, um, while at Cambridge, the position, uh, my work, most of my workflow was use, usage of Red Cup, MySQL, and the Shiny Dashboard. So uh, recently I did uh, a presentation at YR conference, so you can get the link here for how, um, how my how the workflow uh, uh, was set up and uh, the way I've used the uh, same skills I'm going to teach you today, or I'll show you today to be able to plot that. So, uh, my interests are in joint modeling of longitudinal survival data. Actually, that's my topic. That's the, that's the topic of uh, my my master's thesis, and I also uh, um, fancy predictive modeling and uh, data mining. So uh, that being said. Um, I know uh, we, you've been told about the collaboration, so I'm not going to, uh, to talk much about that. I'm just going to remind you that uh, this uh, uh, meetup uh, has been made possible uh, by the joint collaboration of these two user, uh, user groups. Okay, so objective. So what, 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 uh, just to get your spirits high and uh, what you are, what you'd expect from this particular uh, like session, uh, we'll be doing over ninety percent of coding. So that is, I'll share my uh, my R screen. We'll code together. So you'll see the uh, walkthrough of those examples and implementation. Then at the end of it, uh, we'll share the scripts with you so that you can probably try them out on your own. So um, in that, in the same spirit, so what I have uh, prepared to show you today is uh, the four items there. So. I'll show you how you can efficiently connect R to a relational database management system, and uh, how once you have made you have established the connection, how can you query data stored in those particular relational database management system from within R? And uh, also, I'm chipping in another database uh, which is uh, not that fam uh, like not that uh, 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 famous, but I know in um, health research. So for those who do health research, you've come across Red Cup. So I'm also going to show you how you can connect and export data from Red Cup using uh, uh, R, so from within R. So after that, uh, we are going to cover. I'm going to cover a section on API security. I believe uh, it would be um, uh, good to also try to talk about issues around API security because an API is basically um, uh, like a uh, and access to whatever repository you are trying to uh, work with. So we'll talk about that. I'll show you a few ways you can you can secure your APIs while you share your screens in this era of uh, uh, collaborative uh, research. So um, in this session, uh, you want to learn how to design a relational database management system. 
I'm sorry, we won't be covering any in-depth topics on designing and uh, authoring surveys in RedCup, as well as uh, writing high-level SQL code. Yeah, we'll do some SQL code for demonstration, but uh, we don't. We won't go into that deep, but we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll substitute that with uh, a few R codes which you are familiar with. So I want to we want to make it as as friendly to the, an R user as possible. But if you you feel like you want to go a notch higher, we've given uh, at the end of the presentation we have given you a few links where you can, whereby you can get to learn more about SQL. Okay, so. Uh, what is a relational database management system? Uh, so from the world relational database, relational, so this is uh, basically uh, uh, a system where uh, data is organized in tables, which have a relationship in, in, in a way. And usually, mostly in um, big companies, uh, even in, in, in research companies, data is, data, data, data is stored and managed from uh, within those particular database management systems. And uh, like I said, they are relational because uh, whatever tables, rather we call the, they are called relations when you go to the SQL one, they are interrelated, interrelated or rather uh, um, uh, they have a relationship based on some uh, keys, uh, unique keys. And uh, I think that's, 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 that's well covered in uh, SQL if you get to, 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 to read something on it. Uh, and um, one of the like the most famous language that is used to query this particular database database management system systems are, is the language that we all have, here, have heard about the SQL language structured query language. So it's used to query and manage data in this particular relational database management system. So a few examples of the relational database management system. I'm sure some of you, some of them you had like or rather you have used. I'm sure you've used MS Access. So MS Access is a uh, and added DBMS, uh, and of course the very famous one, MySQL and Oracle. And so, uh, so for this uh, session, um, we are going to basically cover how we can connect efficiently R to MySQL, SQLite, and uh, and RedCap. So we are going to cover uh, the ones that I've listed there, the others that I've listed there. Okay, so. Uh, so research electronic data capture. So I just want to give you an overview of some of these things or tools you're going to uh, work with in R, so, so that at least you have a background information. So uh, usually if you are in um, health research, as opposed to a relational database management system, there's um, this design of studies, uh, longitudinal studies, whereby you have uh, 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 patients coming uh, for follow-up and so far. So there's this database called RedCap, Research Electronic Data Capture, which has which is very famous uh, in particularly uh, doing such studies, also, also even uh, managing surveys as well uh, uh, as uh, data collection offline. So it was built in Vanderbilt and uh, what I can say, I've used it for quite some time. It can collect virtually any kind of data. And if you if you if you ever used if you have ever used a ODK or Cobo Collect tool, so it has also a mobile a red cap, uh, a mobile app whereby you can do offline data collection. So uh, then you can uh, synchronize later on uh, 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 when you are in uh, a connectivity uh, a connected area. So it's a uh, it's quite uh, famous as I said in, uh, in institutions of research, and uh, you can get more information about that particular uh, tool in the link uh, that I've shared there. Okay, so so what are, so the structure, this is the structure of the, the this particular session. So we are going, I'm going to show you how you can connect uh, R to a relational database management system uh, using three uh, 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 databases and also three types of, uh, or rather three ways you can do that. So you can collect, you can connect R to a database using a, a, an applicable uh, ODBC driver. So ODBC is uh, open database connectivity. And uh, this I think is a standard, uh, uh, like it's a group of uh, uh, databases. I think uh, there's, there are links at the end of the, this presentation where you can get more information about uh, some, uh, some of those. Uh, 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 so we are going to also use BI enabled packages. So 
I want to explain more on the code, what we mean by DBI-enabled packages, as well as uh, uh, using uh, an SQL code chunk in our, in our Markdown file. So this one, again, we are going to see the advantages and, and uh, the, 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 the way it differs from the rest. So again, uh, once we have established a, connect, a connection to a database, we are going to I'm going to show you how you can query that database from within R, either by using a raw SQL code or using uh, uh, the normal tidyverse, uh, like uh, uh, verbs, deploy our verbs. So uh, that being said, um, I'll come this, to this slide at the end of the presentation. I just I just want to switch back to R and then let's let's get going. So let me know if you're able to see my R screen. Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, so I want to give a disclaimer. I I tend to speak so fast, so if I swallow some of my words, please, you can always uh, uh, seek clarification. Yeah. So um, okay. So let's get started. So I there there was a, a file that was sent and. Uh, um, there were some databases that were, were included in the link, so you're supposed to download them so that we we can use them in this particular uh, session. So I have set up a local MySQL database that you're going to use to connect. And uh, I've also, uh, like, I also have those uh, 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 database that I sent, I shared with you earlier. So maybe when we are doing connectivity to SQL, SQL like database, you can always uh, maybe run the code along. So we need this, these packages here, as you can see listed, and uh, their functionality. So I'm, so I'm going to run them, go ahead and uh, execute that code. And uh, you can check, we have different, uh, like I said, you can connect uh, R to an R, uh, a relational database management system via via an ODB, uh, ODBC uh, driver. So you can run such a code. So this ODBC list drivers is a function from ODBC. So to just get to know how many, like uh, the kind of uh, drivers that you have uh, in your system. So there are so many, and I think some are uh, uh, like a, almost similar. So uh, I did this and uh, you can also, yeah. So these are the list of, uh, ODBC drivers that are available, but we are going to use one specific one for SQL. So I can just do unique to get to know. Yeah, so about six of them. So we are going to make use of this one here to connect to my 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 SQL database, and uh, also tested with this one. It's also working. So now, so how do you how can I connect uh, R to my 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 SQL database? So uh, first approach, you're going to use an, ODB, an ODBC driver. So, and uh, that's, a, that's a function of the package, ODBC. So um, you are going to create an object, call it uh, some connection, uh, give it a name. So we are, I have three databases in my, in, my, in my local computer that I've set up, and they are the same databases that I sent out. So one is called Na 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 Naive demo study. So that's something. It was a some some. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. It's just some random data, just to show. And there's uh, NY New York flights. I'm sure you are aware of that database as well. So I turned it into a database. I'm going to connect to my local uh, 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 my SQL database. So um, I'll call maybe this connection. Uh, Nikon for connection. So I'll call it the first connection because you're going to create three connections. Uh, one for ODBC driver, the other one for DBA compliant package, then the other one uh, for what? Uh, uh, SQLite. So is this function called DB connect? That's the function you use to connect to a database. So DB connect, the first argument it takes is the, is the driver. So you're using ODBC driver, so you just specify that. Then you supply the specific arguments that the, the DB, DB connect needs to connect to your database. So one of the arguments it will require is the driver, as I said. So you just apply it as a... As a Excuse as me, a, Chris. Yes. 
sorry, would you mind zooming in just one level up um, for okay. some of us? View, go to view, zoom in. Uh, I need to get this thing somewhere. So uh, view. Zoom in. Just Is that one. okay? Yeah, yeah, I, that's okay uh, for me. Um, perfect, perfect. Someone else had the issue. Okay, please continue, thank you. I'm just going to copy this uh, uh, driver and paste it here. So you need the driver uh, as an argument. You will need uh, the server. So my server here is localhost. So, but if you are if you are in an institution, usually your IT guys will set up some uh, server uh, server somewhere and they'll give you the address. So mine is localhost because I'm basically uh, connecting from a local a locally created database. Then you will have to provide the. Um, uh, you have to, draw, to provide the user identification. Um, I'm using root and definitely the password. Uh, I'm going to use that. Uh, that's the password I created. Quite a long one. So then there's uh, the port. I think it's optional for some uh, for some cases, but I think I can. I, I'm going to run this. Um, did I spell something wrong? Uh, um might have spelled something wrong and somewhere or my password is wrong i need to confirm that uh, so server is localhost sorry uh local hosts uh, and, uh, um, so i'll need the uh, the driver the server uh, the uid the password Okay. Sorry, I'm going to just a minute. Uh, sorry. I'm just looking for my password. Sorry, I think I might have forgotten it. Uh, so let me just uh, get it up and uh, we, con we continue. Sorry for that. Great, I think it's the one. Perfect, so um, I think what I I might have needed to also provide is the database, the one I'm connecting to. So let me start with the world database like that. Uh, what is not happening, server. My advice spells something wrong. Something wrong here. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Okay, so I think uh, PWD. Okay, so uh, so then my my connection is established. So I provided the driver, the server, the user identification, the database name, and the, uh, the password. So now uh, you can see uh, on the right hand uh, there's a tab that has opened up the connection tab. So and it's it's it's, it's almost listing almost every database that I I have uh, within my system. So I have you can see the, there's NYC flights, there's the night night demo study, then there's this world. So you can uh, do so one way you can connect uh, a database, MySQL database, by using ODBC driver. So you just have to provide the driver, uh, the, the specify the driver, server, the user identification, that is the UID, the database name, and the password. So right now, this connection here, uh, I'll probably change this database to NI demo because uh, uh, that will be the because the way I've named it, that will be the, the, the connection for that particular uh, database like that. So then, um, so from there you can do, like you can check the number, the table, the list of tables uh, in that particular database by just running the command DB, DB list tables like that, then provide the connection. So if you do that, then you get that uh, this particular database contains three tables, TBL baseline, TBL discharge, and monthly follow-up. So I'm going to quickly go to the next 
uh, uh, way, rather another approach that you can connect uh, uh, your R to a database. So this one is by use of DBI compliant R package. So DBI compliant R packages, these are R packages that uh, offer, like enable a connectivity between uh, your R or rather studio to like um, uh, a specified uh, database. For example, for, for MySQL, the DBI compliant package for MySQL is R MySQL. R MySQL for the for SQLite is R SQLite, and you can guess as you go. Yeah, so R Oracle for Oracle, R uh, Postgres for Postgres database. So I'm going to connect uh, uh, um, my 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 SQL database to, to to R using a DBI compliant package, which is R MySQL. So I'm going to name this connect connection. Let's say. Uh, the second connection for, Ni for, Ni for, Ni for Nairobi study. Then I'll, I'm using the same function DB connect. Then the first argument here, you have to provide the driver. So the one that I've just talked about, the, the driver from the DB compliant package, which is uh, MySQL in this case. So actually it should be R MySQL. Mm. Or simply, you can just simply do MySQL. Uh, then, for this one, you also have to specify the host. So the host is just the same as the server up there. So I'm going to use localhost because this is the one that I'm uh, it's locally hosted. Uh, you have to provide the database name uh, uh, in this in this uh, in this particular approach. You just write DB name, and uh, I'm connecting to Nai demo study, and um, you also have to provide the user. Uh, my user is root. Excuse and, uh, me. Yes. There's a question. Okay. Can one then visualize the available tables with, for instance, view, the view function in R after connection and seeing the table names? Um, and at this juncture, no, uh, but shortly I'll show you how. Okay, thank at you. This, uh, yeah. So, but if you are, if if uh, if if the question maybe uh, if I could uh, uh, try to maybe bend that question a little bit. So, if they are asking if I'm able to, to to expand this and view this table, it's possible. But uh, if I'm able, like if I'm able to, because if you go to the environment, there are no tables there. Uh, they are the only connection. But under the connection under the connection tab. Yeah, you are you are able to expand and see these tables. Yeah, you are able. To, you can be, you can view them. You can view them on the as a as a, as a normal R data, data frame. That's the advantage of connecting using uh, the ODBC driver. Because if you connect using the, uh, the DBI compliant package uh, as the first approach, you realize that this connection tab does not come. So yeah, so that's one of the advantages I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, why. Like why or DBC is better than maybe using the uh, the DBI compliant package. Thank you for that question. So then you provide the password, the same password I'm using, uh, root at 2021, uh, train like that. Okay, so if you look closely here, uh, I wanted to just show you the difference between the syntax for um, DBC and the MySQL the DBI compliant package is that uh, for these ones, all the arguments start with capital letter. You see driver, server, UID. UID is for user identification, database, and the PWD. But for DBI compliant package, you see, again, you're not using server, you're using the host. Then you're using DB name instead of database, and you're using user instead of UID, and password instead of PWD. So if I run this, I'll get a second connection not the environment, which basically is a, my, a, a, my, a, a MySQL connection. Again, I can say DB list tables, just see the, the same, same, same number of tables uh, uh, which are in particular, that particular database. So it's DB, TBL baseline, TBL discharge, and TBL monthly follow-up. So basically, you can connect to any database among the ones that I've listed here. So for instance, I can do I can do another connection using ODBC, but it's the same. Maybe I can like, let me use a let me use a, a, a DBI compliant package. I can connect to the world database. 
So I just say, I'll call this world home. So this is my connection. So DB connect, then provide the backend driver that you, you're going to use, I'm going to use in my SQL. Then provide the host, uh, which is local host. Uh, provide the database name, that's DB name, which will be world. You can see it on the right hand panel. Provide the user, which is the same, same user root and uh, password. And we say this is a root at 2021, like that. So now if I run this, I'll get another connection called world. And if I try to list the number of tables in that particular database, uh, you'll realize that, uh, uh, sorry, uh, world home. I have also three database, the city, this country, and this country language. So that being said, um, I believe you can see the difference between connecting uh, R to a database using ODBC driver and connecting using a DBI compliant package. Um, so I want to also, I want to go to the last um, approach that you can connect a database, uh, R to a database, and uh, I'm going to look at SQL-like database. So SQL-like database, it's different from MySQL in the sense that uh, MySQL needs a server, like it needs to be set up in a server. So you will, you will find in literature, SQLite is being called a serverless database because it's, uh, it's, more, it's more of a, I can say it's portable. It doesn't need a server to basically uh, uh, like be used. So, and that's why I was able to send a few files. I was able to prepare a few files containing uh, 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 like, the structures of a database inside them. So you'll find the, I'm talking about these files here. Um, if I come, so the likes of Naimor demo study.db. So the same, same databases that are, are in my SQL, I did convert them into uh, SQL like databases so that you can, it, it can be read into, or they can be connected into use, using, using. R. So uh, connecting, SQL database is quite different from connecting um, my SQL database in the sense that we are not going to need the, the likes of hosts and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the user and password and so forth, not unless you want to set them. Because this, this is something, these are like a uh, uh, database in a, on a disk or somewhere in your computer. So uh, that being said, I'm going to connect to NYC flights. These are SQL database and I'm going to use the approach, the second approach of a DBI compliant package. So then the DBI compliant package for SQLite becomes, as you can guess, SQL, uh, 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 my SQLite becomes the, the, the SQLite. That's the backend uh, uh, driver that uh, is DBI compliant to connect with a SQLite database. So I'm going to, I'm going to name this uh, connection, say NYC, uh, connection one. Then I'm going to use the same DB connect so in connecting to SQLite, once you specify the, 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 the driver as the first argument, the argument you only need is that is the database name, so the DB name. And this one is the path to where you are, you've stored your, your, your databases. For instance, uh, I have mine in um, SQLite underscore databases. So uh, SQLite underscore databases, and uh, I'm going to click in NYC, uh, flights.db, like that. If I run this, uh, I'll get another connection, uh, NYC con one, and you can see it's a SQLite. You can always find, you can always run class for each of these uh, connections, and they will tell you uh, where they belong. So these are, these are an, 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 a connection that, uh, belongs to these are an uh an are my sql connection and if you run for example class of the one i've just created right now nyc you'll realize that it's a it's a sql like connection mm -hmm. so the, i can use the same same function db list tables basically uh, get to get to know how many tables are there in my nyc uh, new york flights uh, database you can see i have five tables so uh, in a nutshell, uh, that's how you can do the first step uh, uh, in working with databases in R, which is connecting, 
connecting your R to database. So right now I have I have uh, uh, approximately three connections because I think nine connections is just the same database. So I'll say I have connection to three databases. So uh, I want to go to the next step now. So once you have once you have established a connection, what next? How do you how do you uh, uh, how do you use how do you use the uh, how do you how do you access data how do you work with the data that is in the database and so forth so and i said uh, there are two ways you can do that one you can um, you can do that uh, uh, using dbi functions or you can do that using deployer uh, 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 verbs the usual select filter and 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 the, and the rest so I'm going to cover a, a, a lean list of DBI functions that you can use to now, now get data into the actual data now that you have a connection into R and work with it. And a few, a few things that you can also do with the, those functions. So the first function I think we have already covered it is the listing the number of tables in a database. So, and this is simply DB list tables like that. So you 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 call the function then you give it a connection any connection the connection the whatever connection you want whatever database you want to see tab, uh, the number of tables for so if i wanted to see how many tables uh, world uh, the world database has i give it the connection for world database and it can tell me it i have city country and country language so that's 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 um, one of the functions uh, the other function is you can also list the field names which we call the variables of a specific table in a database. So for example, now that I know well, uh, the world database has uh, three tables, city, country, and country language. So how can I know how many variables are in uh, the table country? So you can use, you can do this by just typing db list fields. So db list field takes two arguments. The first argument is the connection of the database that you want to view uh, a table for. So let me say, let me say uh, world, maybe I can use nine nai connection then the second argument is the table in that particular database that you want to see you want to view the variable for so uh, i'll go back to db list tables to just remind me uh, of the number of the number of the, the tables in uh, the night the nairobi demo uh, study so i have tb baseline so for instance if i wanted to see how many variables are in the table baseline i'll just supply it as a second argument in the db list field so if you run that you realize that this particular uh, table has um, 10 variables, as you can see. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so the other uh, uh, function, a uh, DBI function, I want to also show you is how to execute a query. So executing a query, this simply means now you have an SQL query. Uh, you want it to be executed uh, in the database. So you want to send it in the database. So with this, we normally use uh, uh, uh what we, the function db send query so db send query the first argument for db send query is the connection of the database that you want to send the query to so maybe i want to send the query to world database like that so then the second argument is an actual sql code that contains um, the specific instruction so for instance uh, if i want to select all columns so I want to select select all. That's how you do it in uh, SQL. Select all from uh, which table in the uh, world. So maybe city. So you can start by that, simple as that. So so this will return. So basically, this is an SQL code that selects all variables from a table called city in this world database. So this will basically return uh, not uh, um, data. But uh, let me just save it somewhere. Let me say this, uh, let me call it world something results. So it will, it will return the results of uh, the particular query that you've run. So you, if you realize, if you look at the, the, the class here is a, is a, is a, is a, 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 a MySQL result. So like it doesn't contain what you expected like data or something. So if you look at the class of that particular object, you uh, realize that, uh, let me just, yeah, it's it's just a result. It doesn't contain uh, uh, data. So to turn this result into data, we use a function called 
uh, DB fetch. So now you are fetching whatever data set that these results contain into now a proper proper data frame in R. So then I'll call it D frame. I'm usually uh, uh, void of words to name objects, but I know that's a struggle for any statistician and programmer. So I'll just say uh, DB fetch, then give it the object of containing the the results uh, for for the for the SQL query. So then, if I do that, now I get a proper proper data frame which contains the the data for the table called city, and here it is. So the reason why I'm showing you this is because there is another function which does the two at a go. So I just wanted to, you so that you appreciate that function because I mean uh, doing, if if you're working, for example, you're working um, in, in, uh, in uh, I, what can I say? You are doing this on a regular basis, uh, doing two codes uh, to get just a single results is not something that is pleasant. So then uh, there's this called uh, a replacement I'll call this object D frame two. So this uh, is called, the code goes uh, by DB get query. So DB get query is a combination of DB send query and DB fetch results. Such that now DB get query takes an argument, the same argument, uh, the first argument is the connection, but uh, the second argument also the same one, it takes the SQL code, I'm just going to copy and paste here. But now you end up getting a, a proper proper data frame instead of results as, as, we, as we saw uh, 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 initially. So if I run this, I'm going to get, sorry. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, I'm gonna disconnect. I'm gonna clear, sorry, let me. Uh, so it be clear. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to solve that. Uh, yeah. So uh, now if I run this, I'll get a proper like data frame. Uh, uh, so if you, if you, if you notice uh, the two data frames are not uh, basically the same, but it's the same data. So that tells you that uh, DB, DB send query and DB fetch actually fetches, like it, it gets you uh, like uh, not the full data. So you can specify, you can specify the limits here, but it gets like now it's it has just gotten the first 500. But for the DB get query, once you get the connection and the SQL code, it gets, it gets you the entire data set uh, for that, from that particular table. Uh, you can as well, I mean, uh, skip the SQL part, uh, like uh, select from blah, blah, blah. You can basically read an entire table from a, data, a database into R as a data frame. So I'll call this the, the, uh, D frame three. Now we use a function DB read table. So DB read table takes the first argument, uh, the connection. So this time now let me use NAI connection and the table that you want to basically uh, read data for. So for example, I want the, the discharge table. So I'll just uh, paste it there. So then if I run this command, I will get a data frame, which is basically uh, the data that is contained in my discharge table. So this particular code is equivalent to uh, select, uh, sorry, as an, as an SQL code of select all, from uh, TBL discharge, if you are to do it in SQL, uh, in, uh, in 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 uh, in, uh, in 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 SQL in SQL way. So uh, again, with the connection that you have, you can basically um, get a little bit of metadata, what they contain, and everything. So by just saying DB get information. Uh, so DB get info. If you give it a connection, it will tell you the type what it contains and everything, the version, the port, if it's applicable, the root, uh, the, the, the particular username and everything. So that being said, uh, I want to go up and come once more, uh, now writing uh, a little bit of uh, familiar SQL code so that you can, you can see and appreciate the fact that uh, uh, 
uh, you can basically type any SQL code using the joins and uh, the where clause and all that, or even selecting a, little, a few, a few like uh, variables if you if you, if you so wish. So um, forgive me, I'm going to focus on one uh, database, and uh, uh, I'm going to basically focus on uh, the the Nairobi demo study database, so so that I can just be clear. Uh, and uh, have a clear thought, thought, thought process. Okay, so um, so I'm going to basically revisit uh, uh, db 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 get query because basically this is what you'll mostly be using if you are if you are to fetch your data from uh, from 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 R uh, uh, from your database into R. But the difference between this db send query and db get query is the fact that for db send query. Uh, it's just the computation has already happened in the database, but nothing, you don't have the data yet. So, uh, but for the DB get query, it uh, it sends the, the code to the database and at the same time fetches the results for you into uh, into your into your R. So now uh, let's try and uh, uh, maybe use uh, some elaborate, maybe SQL code uh maybe let's say let's use joins and everything you can can do that so let's say for example i wanted uh, so if you look at uh, so i'm just i'm going to refer to this so if you look at this database uh the world uh it has city it has country Excuse me. yes sorry um i can see some questions on the chat yes. um is it okay if i ask them right now yep Okay, so I think there are about three. So the first one is, um, and I'm going to read it out as it has been typed. When you connect, for example, my SQL, from where do you get the data? Do you get it from localhost? Okay, so, uh, okay, so my SQL database, uh, as I said, is um is one of the relational database management system that uh, uh, are provided by I think is it uh, Oracle the vendor for managing and uh, storing data. So this is a, a framework that is being set uh, is being like structured in uh, 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 like IT IT like uh, infrastructure. It's an it's an IT infrastructure. So whereby the the, the 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 IT gurus can set up and uh, uh, point uh, like um, uh, the paths rather the sub the, the server paths to like various locations. So in short, I'm trying to say this is a uh, take take uh, take of it. If you ever heard of uh, maybe GitHub, maybe GitHub is the wrong example to give. Think of it as uh, some GitHub somewhere, but it's storing databases. So therefore you have the link. So the link is the host. So the reason why I'm using localhost is because I have done the same same setup that any IT expert can do on server, on uh, on cloud, but I have done it on my computer. So my computer is ask, is acting as my server. So it's hosting for me the, 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 the particular database. And therefore the path to where it's being hosted in my computer is localhost. Ideally, you in, in institution, you'll see something like uh, You'll see like a real either an IP address or uh, some some server address uh, uh, where you can get your databases. I hope I have answered that question correctly. Um, I hope I hope I hope he's answered. Um, the second one is um, when you get the query result or the big get query, is the data now in memory or still a connection? That's a very good question. If you do DB get query, the data is on the memory. But if you do DB send query, the data is in the connection. That's a very good question. So the for DB send query, the data becomes the data comes into the me, into memory when you do DB fetch. But for DB get query, the data comes to the to memory direct. That's a very good question. Thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the last one. Um, from your experience, which is better or safer, getting the entire database or a subset, e.g. 500 observations? Well, uh, 
I think I wanted to tackle that uh, at the deployer part, but uh, now that it has come up, um, I will say uh, depends on the resources that you have, but uh, I will say um, because the because for for DB for DB send query, you're basically doing some computation in the database, not in uh, not in the memory. So therefore, uh, you are able to, like, you are able to basically get the database, do the heavy lifting and and everything. So uh, I will say I will prefer DB send query because uh, when now you you like you move to DB fetch, you are clear of what you want. But for DB for DB get query, this 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 this. This, 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 the all of this process, I think, uh, uh, takes place uh, in in the memory as well. So then you will find that if you try to run this system time, you find this is a bit. It takes a bit more time to compute than than these two combined. But you can test that. You can try and test that separately. But uh, uh, I will advise uh, uh, getting um, not partial results, but just do db send query first then you just do the let the database do the heavy lifting be sure what you want then you can do db fetch but uh, that will come uh, I'll, I'll i'll show you a better way to do that using deployer verbs later on okay thank you so much christopher and um just to remind you you have like 30 minutes to yeah that's why i was uh, i mean i wanted to rush a little bit so okay so Thanks. um I think in the next the next questions we can just wait until the end of the session so maybe so that I can come because I'm sure I can always come back and uh, try to, to, to yes 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 sure uh, great so uh so uh you can also you can do a join definitely uh, uh if you know if you know how to write an SQL code you can do a join for instance uh, I wanted to use the world data set so just demonstrate one so let me say uh world two table uh, so you can say db get query, uh, give it the connection, and basically uh, go ahead and uh, do uh, an SQL code that you are joining two tables, uh, and you still get the. So I'm going to join city and country. So I'll just say uh, select, select all. Of course, I'm not going. Uh, so from uh, city, I'm going to give it an uh, an alias as as C, uh, so I'm going to say uh, uh, join um, country. I'm going to give it an alias as uh, C O C O N uh, on C dot. I think country code. Uh, they have some the common the common and. Uh, the common column is country code. So I'm going to use a C country code equals to C O N uh, dot country code. Mm. I think this will be, let me use country language, sorry. Let me use the table country language. So instead of country. So uh, country uh, language, that's that column. Yeah, so uh, you realize now I get a data set called uh, world data, which is a combination of the data set uh, uh, city, sorry, city and the country language. So what I'm trying to show is that uh, you can basically write any SQL code here, include the where, the the the, the 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 where clause and everything basically uh, uh, any sql code that you can copy from uh maybe a an, an ide for like the sql log you can paste it here and it can work be, uh, very well but you have to enclose it in a like the, this this double code like a string a string uh, 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 in this in this way so uh I think because of time, I wanted to do another join, but I believe uh, you have the databases, you can try that out. I want to go and uh, tackle how you can use deployer verbs to do the same work. So in this section, 
this this now this now I think the juicy part of this particular uh, training because here I'm just trying to say that you don't have to know SQL code to basically work with an SQL database. You just need to know uh, the deployer apps. If you ever worked with Tidyverse, uh, then this is your playground, uh, and you have a connection to a database. This would be your playground. So we use the function TBL. Uh, to basically communicate with the uh, a database. So TBL takes an argument. The first argument takes the connection. Uh, let me say, I'll say nice study like that. Then the second argument, it takes the a table in that particular database. So I'll just say TBL, I think baseline. So this, this function behaves the same way as, uh, as a DB send query because it doesn't really bring you a data set it brings you some 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 like a summary uh, as you can see here uh, it doesn't even know how many rows it has but it, of course it's sure just 10 columns so just giving you an overview of what your data will look like but it doesn't it doesn't give you a, a data set so actually if you learn if you run class on this you'll find that these are a connection as well so it's not a data it's not a data frame so then uh, you can go ahead, you can uh, even continue. You can say then uh, after doing that, you can select a few variables, say I want uh, subjid, subjid. I want uh, maybe age month like that. And maybe base, 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 base muak. So this basically the usual, the usual deploy that you write, but now you know you are, you are, you are communicating, you are writing this and uh, it's being compute it's being um, done on the database so what 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 uh, happens here is that uh, uh, deployer turns i mean uh, converts this particular uh, 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 like verb into an sql code then passes it into a database then you get the results so at this stage as we said these are connection you don't have data set yet so so to, to see the kind of um, query that has been run, an SQL query that has been run uh, on that particular code, you can use the function show show query. So if you do that, you realize that uh, it will give you an SQL query that has been passed to the uh, database, which is basically this. So select, subject, age month, base mark, form. So this SQL code, you can use it maybe somewhere like here. And uh, it's a good way to learn SQL. So show query write your you write your deployer or a tidy verse code accessing uh, uh, accessing your, your database uh, variables and everything then you do show query so for instance maybe i could even say uh, uh, let me do another one here i can say uh, maybe i can use filter so maybe filter where maybe uh, filter where age month I want people who are greater than or older than say 10 months like that so and again if you do show query it will tell you it will show you the kind of sql uh, sql uh, code that has been passed to the database so it's select all from this database where age month is that so this i found it a very good way to get to know uh, like translate your Tidyverse codes uh, to SQL and also try to learn uh, SQL from Tidyverse like that. So I, uh, I said this is a connection, there's no data. And uh, uh, how you get your data now is applying another function called collect. So the advantage of this is that, uh, again, the database does a lot of the lifting. So the filtering, the selecting and everything happens in the database. It doesn't happen in the memory. So then once you are sure what you want, you can now bring that data into memory by using collect. So I'm going to bring this, all of this, maybe maybe I start with this one. Uh, so what you do after just uh, doing TBL, giving the connection, specifying the, the data, the data, the, the data, the table, I mean. So if you want this data, say let's call it uh, Nae D frame one, you are signing to that object then at the end of that at that at the end of that particular query just do the function collect so collect does uh, the, the actual uh, like bringing of the data into the memory so now if i go to my environment here i'll find 
this data frame here, which is basically the subject, age month, and base, base me work, which is what I selected here. So you can do that to any any of um, like uh, any of the command that you have written. Um, then uh, I wanted to also say that uh, you can also copy an entire data, uh, an entire table from a database by just saying TBL, give it a connection. So let me give it a world connection. Uh, and you just give it the name of the table, maybe on city, then you at the end of it, you collect that result. So then you can be able to save it in an object. So maybe city different like that. So uh, this, this function is similar to another function up there, which we said uh, it was db, db read table. I don't know if that's the spelling. If you remember, because we are reading a, an entire table from the database into, into our R. But uh, you can do the same using the plier uh, by just running this particular command. So when it comes to joining, doing joins in using this particular deployer uh, uh, approach, I want to just say that uh, you, for instance, if I wanted to join um, baseline and discharge, so I'll just uh, do TBL, use the Nairobi database, then I'm, I'm dealing with the tab table uh, baseline. So I can just go ahead and pipe, then say left join. So uh, the, the, the second table that you want to join to, you have to give it an entire, the all of this particular in, uh, like uh, wrapping. So for example, you want to do the other table is, t tab, uh, is a discharge. If you do TBL discharge here uh, without using the all of this uh, uh, expression, you'll get an error. So then in that case, you just uh, like reference it, uh, the entire of that particular table. So in this case, I want to reference the table TBL, TBL discharge. So in this small um, uh, dummy study of mine, the, the, common, the common field there is subject. So you see, these are these are, these are usual like usual uh, usual uh, uh, deployer like uh, tidyverse coding, but now uh, the objects the objects are are just connection to the databases, but they imply like a database. So if I do this, of course I'll get a connection, and uh, if I want that, I can do collect. But before I do collect, let me say show query to just see uh, what kind of SQL query that has gone into that. So you can see we are selecting all these variables from this table, uh, an alias of the left-hand side. Then we are doing left join, the same thing, but this is now an SQL code. And of course, uh, you can see uh, which keys that it has been um, uh, joined on. So eventually you can you can uh, say this baseline and uh, discharge data. So you can collect this data. You can use collect to basically bring this data into memory uh, like that. So the difference again, I'm going to repeat, is that uh, whenever you do this without collect, is that any process, any deployer, any deployer uh, like uh, verbs that you write there, whatever process that you are doing using the usual R uh, codes, that is being translated into uh, an, a SQL query, then it's being sent to the database. So the database does the, the computation. So then when you are ready with your results, you are sure this is what you want, then you can invoke this particular function called collect to bring your data into, into, into memory. Uh, I'll move to the last, uh, uh, this is, I'm not going to spend much time on it. Uh, it's straightforward. So how you can connect uh, data, uh, data, a database uh, and, and R using a, a chunk, a SQL chunk. So if you come, if you see, uh, so let me, how can I move this down? to move it somewhere let me bring it here so if you come here you'll see this uh, uh, like uh, section for adding code chunk so there's a code chunk for sql so you can add a sql code chunk if you want to connect to database so what you do you just come here click on the drop down then click on sql so then uh, you supply so the first argument is connection you supply the connection that you want so for instance uh, uh, I want uh, uh, maybe to work with the NI, NI, NI connection. Uh, just look where is it. So you supply it. I'm not sure if it's a string or what. 
then what happens now is that you write your um, you you are all a SQL code inside here. So I think I don't know why it normally misbehaves, uh, but uh, uh, I normally put an extra backtick for it to work. So I have never understood why, but I think others normally work like that uh, without having to have extra backtick. So then, um, so I'll just want to copy paste this this SQL code. I'm sure I, I hope it will run. Then paste it here, and you see it can highlight. It's highlighting this the what the 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 key the key the key um, uh, words or other uh, for SQL. So if I run this, uh, that's not working. So let me just write on my own. Select all from uh, say TBL baseline. Yeah, like that, I think that's enough. So if I do that, uh, what, did I, what did I do wrong? Um, yeah, this connection. Okay, um, I don't understand what's happening here. Select all from, uh -huh. but I, I don't think, so there's, output.var so output.var is basically what you want to name that that particular data build, that the, the data that you expect to be pulled by this sql code so let me just call it uh, uh, maybe <coughs> nine different and i call it three or something but i don't understand why uh, uh, i can't get my i can't get my 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 data my my sql code running um yeah i'm going to give up i'm not sure why it's not running i don't think it's uh that i uh, no, no, no i'm going to give up uh, on this but yeah uh maybe uh once i send when i'll be sending this script i'll maybe be uh, i'll have already troubleshoot done some troubleshooting here but yeah so this is how you can do that you you input a, a sql code chunk so, uh, specify the connection the output var is simply the name of the data frame that will be brought rather will be will be uh, will be stored once you do once you do uh, uh, this particular computation yeah so like for example this one the t the the nine different three will contain the data from TBL baseline, but I'm going to troubleshoot that when I send this code to you guys so that you can see how that works out. Well, that's done for for relational database management system. I'm not sure I'm going to do much on RedCap uh, uh, because I needed to cover the other part of uh, uh, API and the security. So for this section, I'm just going to show you the what you need to connect to a red cap database so for that i'm going to i'm going to open up uh, so i'm going to stop sharing and maybe uh, maybe add another screen to share so i'm going to share my browser so i'm going to go to some red cap database this is a um, Yeah, so this this is how Red Cap database looks like. Um, for those who have uh, worked with it, and uh, I'm just going to show you where to get what, so that you can connect to it. I hope you're able to see my browser and not the. Okay, so once you log into Red Cap, so you see uh, like I've I've also set up uh, the da the Nairobi demo study here. So just for 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 just uh, demonstrating. So once you, if you have several projects, they will be listed here. And the one thing I wanted to show you about RedCap is that uh, you can, I mean, you can have, this is longitudinal. So meaning I uh, have three forms, baseline, discharge, and follow-up. So baseline is being done at baseline, discharge, and discharge. So these are time points. This is what we call the time points for long, longitudinal data. So uh, once you've seen that, so this is what we call the events. So the, the columns, the columns are called events then the rows are called uh, instruments. So if you come down here uh, under API, if you click here, you'll see some code, which you call the token. So you'll need this token. 
as well as some URL. So URL, you go to the Red Cup API documentation, then you scroll down to somewhere uh, export records, then you get this URL here. So those, those are the only two things you need to connect to, that, to Red Cup database. So I'm going to go back to R and show you that. Okay, so um, so the we, the package you use to do this is called Red Cup API, the one I sent you, uh, you to basically uh, install. So, and how you create a connection. So I'm just going to say Red Cup con, you use the function Red Cup connection like that. Then the first thing you supply that particular function is the URL, the one I've just shown you. So I'm just going there to pick it, uh, this one here, <coughs> sorry, uh, paste it there. Then I'll also go back and pick the token. So the token is what gives you access. So I'll go back here and pick this token and paste it here. So once I do this, I have now a live connection to my Red Cup database. So you can do several things. You can list the number of events. Uh, so events, the ones I've showed you. So by just saying um, <coughs> export events and supplying the connection. So I want to export events for this particular database. Then these are the events. So you can you saw I had three events: baseline, discharge, and month three. You can as well list the instrument. The instrument is the number of CRFs in the database. So export instruments, then supply the red cap connection. Then you can see I have three instruments: the baseline form, discharge form, month three follow-up form. You can also look at the, the, the database meta, metadata by just saying export metadata, then supply the connection. And uh, it's a big table, so this this involves so maybe I could just use view uh, to just see. So it's uh, the field name, the, the number of fields you have, the, which are the variables, is that where which in which form are they being collected, and if there's any section header, the type of the field, and so forth. So those it's basically more of a more of a data a, a code book of your database. Uh, how variables are called. For example, site is one is a, two is b, three is c and four is D. So that's the metadata, you can get that from the. So exporting red co re records, that's the, that's the business, that's the elephant in the room. So you can do it in three ways. So you can export like the whole, like a whole database into your, your R. And this is usually for only small sized uh, like uh, databases. For example, I can say NI, NI study, then I can say I can use export, use the function export, export records. Then you supply the connection. So once you do that, depending on the the size of your data base, it can take a few minutes, a few seconds. So mine is very small. You see, I now have the database already. It's here. The, the data is here. So naive study somewhere here. But if you look at it, it's uh it's in the long format because uh, you can see baseline form, discharge form, month three form, like that. So each each record is repeated the number of the number of forms, the, 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 as many as the number of uh, forms collected. So this is not a, this is not a desirable feature, and that's why I said uh, this is only for small size databases. Because if you have a very huge, huge database, you can't do export records then provide a connection because it will take forever. Because the, that co the, there will be timeout. I think the if you ever pull database from a, a, a remote uh, like uh, um, um, uh, repository and it takes time to the communication usually gets like uh, broken and the, you cannot get that data so for huge databases i'm going to show you two ways you can do that so for if you have a very very big database you can export by event so by event i mean uh, these events so you can export these events separately we export this event separately, then this one separately, then you can combine. Actually, that's how I work with it. So I'm just going to demonstrate that uh, in, a, in a second. So before that, so I'm just going to look at the help for export records because that's where everything is. Then I'm going to just copy this code because we are going to use this to basically specify what we want. So maybe I want baseline, I want to, I want to uh, export baseline data. So I'm just going to copy that there. So Rcon is uh, you replace this with your connection. Then uh, I'm just going to move this to remove this. This is not very mandatory. So forms, if you want to specify which form you want to you want to extract, 
you specify it under forms. Maybe you want to ex you, you want to extract specific records. You can specify them here as a as a vector. So, but I, my main concern now is events. So I want to extract a specific event which I have said I want to do baseline. So just copy the unique name. So if you go to export events, look at the unique name under under that column. That's what you paste here under events as a as a string like that. So when I run this code. I'll get data for only baseline events. And uh, if I have several events, I can do that, then combine later. And uh, if I now look at baseline, uh, baseline data, you realize that uh, I have some variables that are having NAs. These are variables for other CRFs um, or other forms that are were not maybe done uh, in baseline. So the a good practice is to, when you specify an event, do specify the form as well. So this is what I mean. Uh, in this database, if you come at the project setup, then you go to events, uh, designate. So if you pull baseline event, make sure to pull whatever CRF that is, uh, if there are two or three, you can create a vector of them. So yeah, so I'm just going to do the same and uh, maybe specify that I want I want, um, I'm just going to back here to get the forms. Maybe I want this baseline form. And you normally take the unique name, not the label, because if you take the label, you get an error. So like that. So, and you can customize this as, as much as you want. So you can specify the records you want. You can specify the fields. If you want some specific variables, you can specify. Uh, yeah, you can do all those customization and you can get the data in a desired uh, uh, form. So that's extracting based on events. You can also extract, export, sorry, based on instrument, but, but it's the same thing I've just done here. You just specify the form and ignore the event. So when you specify the form and ignore the event, what happens is that the data will be extracted for that particular form, regardless on what event it's being collected or rather it's being filled. And finally, you can do export users. So you can want, you will want to manage uh, who is using your your database? What 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 are they doing with it and so forth? So you can do that. Export users then supply supply the sorry supply the connection. Then do view. Then you can be able to see all that. So unfortunately, there are only two users here. Yeah, and the, these are the the kind of access rights they have. So you can revoke. You can add access rights and so forth. So I'm going to stop there for databases, uh, maybe a hand, maybe tackle a question before I look at API security, because this will take like a short, short while. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Chris. How long do you think the API security part will take? How long? Like, like three, three to five, three to three to five minutes. Yeah, I think just uh, Malizana with that, then we can have a Q&A session where we'll, I'll ask all the questions. Okay, so if you're able to see my 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 slide, uh, I hope that's what I hope that's what you are seeing. Yeah. Um, so um, so API security simply in, entails uh, protecting the integrity of the API. So if you if you if you saw from my scripts, so suppose we are working on something together, and I was supposed to send you my scripts. So basically, I'll be sending you my credentials. I'll be giving you my API token. I'll be giving you my URL to the, my database. I'll be giving you my password to my database. And I think that is a breach of data. And I think it can cost uh, an organization a fortune. For instance, if uh, if uh, someone gets their hands, an authorized person gets uh, that particular URL for RedCap and the API, they basically have your database because they'll extract it and uh, you won't they can do a lot of things they can even delete the data because you can always you can do that as well so uh i wanted to just bring in the fact that uh, you need to take care uh, while you are using some of these api while you're using some of these connections to databases so that you can keep uh, them secret you keep those codes because those codes are basically an access to your database so there is one way uh you can do that using a file called r.environ and uh, I'm going to demonstrate now in a, in a short while how you can be able to hide your your particular like your 
API tokens, your root, your, your user and password for connected databases without someone necessarily having to be able to uh, to see them. So uh, I'm going to switch back to R and show you that. So for this, um, uh, let me just create a code chunk there. So there's a file, there's a, a startup file in R called r.environ. So how you open it, you just type file.edit, then the double, uh, the string, okay, the double quote, uh, quotation, the tilde sign, then forward slash dot r environ, like that. I know you've you've come across this, this particular uh, file. So when I run this, some file will open here. Uh, it's called r.environ. So what happens, how you can use this file to basically keep your things a secret. So this file, the r dot the dot r environ resides in your in your your in your document. I think uh, can I say you are working directory in your not not in the not in the not in the the project working directory, but in your documents. Like uh, if you go to see users and uh, your username, you go to documents. This is where the file this file is. So highly highly unlikely that someone will ever get access to this file, not unless they have the password to your computer. So what happens here is that uh, you create variables containing your most secret things that you don't want people to see. So for instance, I'll go back to the connection I made earlier on, uh, this one here. So for example, uh, I don't want people to see my, my, my server, my username, and uh, my database name, and my, 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 my password. So what I'll do, I'll pick all this, uh, sorry, I'm copying because I think I'm raising against nice time, but I'm, so I'll pick this and bring them here. So then I'll, I'm going to make, I'm going to make variables containing the specific items that I, I'm, 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 I'm using. So for example, for driver, I can just say driver, then I assign, maybe I could just do this to ease in my work. I'll do like, like that and uh, yep, like that. I don't need the commas. These are just independent, uh, independent variables that I want to keep a secret. These are things I don't want people to see in my in my in my in my in my script. But at the same time, I want to be using them in my script. So this is how you do them. So you create variables, variables uh, uh, for of the, the the name of the variables is uh, of your choosing. So I'm just going to do this for illustration, just get a uh, 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 lower case for this particular. Uh, uh, so I'll do a database and the PWD. So I've created variable names in my r.environ file that contains the things I want to keep a secret. So I don't want people to see my local host. I don't want people to see my root. I don't want people to see my study name or even the password, more especially the password and even the server. So once I do this, I save this particular file. So then when I go back to my actual code where I'm connecting, I don't put this. I remove them like that. Um, just remove them, remove them, remove them remove them. So I'm going to use a function, a very simple function to access those variables that have, 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 have hit, have, uh, that have been hidden in the r.environ file to basically be used here. So that function is usually uh, is, is sys.get and so system.get environ. So this is a function that gets a variable that has been defined in your r.environ. So for example, if I want to get the driver, I'll just say sys.getEnviron, then the name of the uh, variable that contains the, the, the link to my driver like that. So if I run this, if this runs, whatever the, the output is, but is basically your, 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 your driver. So then I'll do the same for the rest. So sys.getEnviron, uh, server, it was small letters like that. Uh, same to UID, sys.getEnviron, UID, uh, then sys.getEnviron, 
database sorry uh, database then finally sys dot get environ then pwd so in this so then i'll i'm going to restart my 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 session because uh, for this to take effect you have to restart your 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 r so now i'm going to i'm going to do the i'm going to make the same connection without necessarily having to type my my password here so i'll just go run the uh, codes again for package uh, loading then if i come here i'll run the same way and what happens now is i have my connection but i have not really exposed my 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 credentials because now if i run this it simply gives me the the driver if i run this it gives me the uid but if i give you this script you don't have these variables in your system so you'll either have to define your own or if you're working together in an organization you will need to put your own credential here but on my end i will have uh, secured my username and password from getting into the wrong hands because this r.environ is basically living in my computer and uh, uh, no one can get access to it not unless they have a password to my computer so that's how you can mitigate uh, this kind of risk whereby you 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 maybe you are collaborating you are using github so you can put this uh, 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 such a similar such like if you have calls that are connecting to a database that has a user name and password those credentials are best hidden in this particular format and uh, i stop there and uh, i'm ready to take questions Shirley. wow chris good job thank you I had prepared that for you. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, that was excellent. So for, for those who don't know me, my name is Shell Myth. I'm based in Nairobi, and I'll be taking you through the Q&A. So let me just scroll up um, to the first question. Um, and oh my God, Chris, I have learned so much. I'm so excited, I'm so happy. I'm glad. Uh, I'm so happy. Uh, first question. First question. Uh, okay. So the first question, there's a place where you, I think you did a join. So the question is, why didn't you specify the type of join that is inner, left, or right? Okay. I'll go back to R. So yeah. I think the only place I did a join was uh, uh, um, oh so, oh yeah so this one so okay so um, so of course in a, in SQL we have uh, we have left join we have uh, outer join we don't have outer join we have uh, or right join I'm not sure so join I think um, the this, if I, if memory serves me, serves, serves me right, join um, and full join are the same. If there's someone who has uh, some information about that, I'll be glad if I, I get help. But I've always been thinking join, when you say join, uh, is the same as just typing full join. Because full uh, full join is, uh, I mean, uh, we, 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 we use it in deployer, but I have never, I've never seen, uh, I've never seen a, a full join in SQL. Maybe I've never used it. But yeah, uh, this is the one I picked, but you can do left join as well. And also, uh, I think, is it right join? Because there's what, I believe it's outer join that SQL does not have. We don't have outer join for SQL yet. But yes, you can define, I just use this for illustration, but you can, based on what you want, because those joins as well, also they have uh, desired results. So, what do you want from between the left hand side of and the right hand side? What do you want to achieve? Then that will inform the kind of join that you choose. But for me, this was just a bit trial for just illustration. Okay. Um, second question is if I get connection with dbplyr tbl, mm -hmm. can I use other functions outside dplyr, e.g., current package functions? 
Uh, okay, so I so when 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 it's a when it's a connection, for example, uh, like this one. Uh, some because we said this is just a connection. It's, it doesn't really, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't amount to any data frame. So there are some functions that can fail. Uh, I might not have the list, but I know like the some something like uh, raw names will fail. So in answering you that, I'll say if the current functions expect an input as a data frame, they will definitely fail. Because uh, we whatever whatever you get from this particular line is not a data frame, not unless you do collect. So once you do collect, uh, then you can use any other deep, any, any other R function because now you'll be dealing with a, a real data frame. Okay, thank you. Another question. Okay, I'm going to paraphrase this. So, what is the difference between using an SQL chunk in our markdown as opposed to using an R chunk, but then you specify engine is equal to SQL. Do you get the question? Yep, 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 yep. Yes, yeah, so there's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no difference at all. Actually, uh, that is just a, a matter of, uh, can I say preference? There's no preference, there's no, like, there's no difference. You'll get the same results. Actually, you can even decide to specify the same way you've done here, you just have an R, an R, uh, an R code chunk. Then write SQL uh, uh, like codes within using DB, DB get query or TBL. So I'll say there's no difference. You'll get the same results. Just that uh, maybe this is the this is the hello world for this kind of uh, uh, illustration. Okay, thank you. Another question after connect. Mm. After connection to a database, e.g. MySQL, can we update or populate or alter the database from R? Absolutely, yes. Uh, depends on depends on the, the, the rights you have. For example, uh, this is my database here, uh, and uh, I've connected. I can decide to write a table into it uh, because I have the right. So there is a function call db write db write uh, db write table so then the first thing you give db write table is the connection so i'll give it an i connection then the second argument is the name of the table what name do you want to call the table i say i'll call it tbl maybe i want to call it uh, empty cars i want to i want to i want to send the empty cars data frame to that particular data 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 database so then you can now give the value so the the third argument is the exact the exact value the exact uh, information you want to write into that particular table. Then I'll say I want to write empty cast like that. So if I run this command, you realize that now if I come to naive demo, I'll have an extra table called empty cast like that. So yes, you can write into a database from uh, R, but it depends on the user rights you have here. So if you don't have right, right. If that that if in that database you don't have the right, the 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 the, the writing user rights, you might not be able to that to do that. Okay. Um, how can we ensure that we don't make very large requests that can overwhelm our computers? E.g., when working with remote databases, that could be huge. Are there ways to check that? So, um, okay, I think uh, in answering that question, I'll say the the the, the one thing the one thing that databases uh, bring to efficiency of using R is the exactly same thing that uh, the question is trying to address. Because um, if I had, for example, a computer which has a RAM of uh, four GB, and I have a CSV file. Which uh, which is uh, maybe 80 GB uh, 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 in size, it will be very impossible for me to work with that database that, that that data set in R because it will exceed like my memory. It will mask my memory out completely. So, but doesn't mean you cannot be able to work with that uh, particular uh, data set. So one thing, one one approach, another one um, uh, one one way you can do that is to convert that particular 8 GB CSV file into 
maybe an, a, a SQLite database so that your 4GB RAM computer can be able to actually fetch, like can be able to do the computation in the database, then get the results that it can handle in, in the memory. So I will say um, these databases are actually designed to, uh, to, to, to address that particular question. So I will say um, that's as far as I, I I I I can I can I can address that particular question because you are not you are not you are not bringing the old data the old database into into the old data into your memory you are just you are just writing some codes that are being computed in the database then you get a few results that you need so I'm not sure whether I have answered that question correctly but I think uh, uh, that's that's the idea of uh, uh, databases like having data sets in uh, some disk which is uh, remotely accessible. Over, Shelmit. Sorry, I had forgotten to unmute myself. Once we've sent a query that, for instance, takes execute, how can we monitor it and know when it's done or failed? Wait, please come up again. Hello? When, once we have, sorry, once we have sent a query that's, that for instance takes a while to execute, how can we monitor it and know when it's done or failed? Okay, so, um, so, so there's, uh, okay, there's, uh, I don't remember the name, but that's now outside outside the outside outside the packages that we looked at today. There's a package that can be able to 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 monitor uh, like uh, uh, the progress of a code, how it runs, and everything if it, if it, if it has failed. But the simpler way to say it is that once you send a query that is taking time to run, of course uh, there is uh, the usual. Uh, uh, the need that R puts here, the red thing uh, that the, the execution is going on. And uh, I think whenever we see that everyone's fingers is crossed, whoever is running that so that maybe it doesn't come up with an error. Because if it fails, definitely print an error on the console that uh, maybe something happened or, or maybe time it timed out or some some aspect of your connection is not working. So then you can be able to go back and uh, uh, rectify. But yeah. I think R is sufficient enough to be able to inform you when a code is running and when it when it has failed and when it has given you the result that you desired. Okay. Uh, um, someone is asking, what do you mean by CRF? Oh, sorry. Wow, oh, CRF, CRF is a, a short form for case report form. It's just like a, 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 a like a, a questionnaire so it's a it's a it's a language they use in health research to refer to a questionnaire so a questionnaire in health research is called crf so crf uh, for for case report form so they report cases in that particular form sorry for using the 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 the, the, not, the, not, the abbreviation without explaining what they mean it's okay um does the api token remain the same throughout asking this in light of reproducibility so one can so one can schedule the script to extract data on say a daily basis uh that's a good question actually that's what uh that's what i do for uh, the organization i work for this the, the api remains the same not unless you change it so it remains the same and uh, you can schedule a script to be pulling data for you. So the only time it will change is when you go and uh, basically do it yourself. So once you create an API token, for example, if it's RedCap, it will be that same, same API, not unless something happens. Sometimes when uh, RedCap has a very good security feature. So if it realizes that uh, some activity, some un 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 unusual activity is happening with your API, it usually suspends it. So then you go and uh, regenerate another one. And that also helps you from maybe if someone was trying to access your data and uh, from a location where RedCap is not usually uh, familiar with or IP address, then it suspends that particular API. But on a normal day, uh, room temperature and pressure, 
the API remains the same. Over. Okay. Um, sorry, that one second delay. I, I have to fast and mute my, uh, myself. Um, let me see where were we? Um, okay. Um, is it possible to create a prompt that asks credentials instead of the R dot our environ file, just so that if I share the script, they don't just break. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's, there's, there's a way. So uh, I can put, I can, I can, I can include that, that as a part of the reference I can send. There's a way you can, there's a, there's a, there's a way you can, uh, I think it's a package that uh, you can put uh, at this specific location where you need user input. For example, if it's password, if you want them to to input everything, then you put on each on every location so that when they run this command, the first one pops up, they write, they, they input, the second one pops up like that, like that until they put all. So if it's password, you just put it at the password level. If they run this, the password, the the, the, the pop-up comes to enter password. Yeah, there's that, there's that, there's that, there's that particular, there's that approach and I can share as a reference material. Over. Um, is write into the database equivalent to administering a form in RedCap? Sorry? Is write into the database mm -hmm. equivalent to administering a form in RedCap? Uh, so for RedCap, it's a different approach. So I maybe if I understand that question right, so uh, they, they want to know if uh the way you do write write db write table like you are writing into a, a relational database a, 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 a mysql database can you do the same for red cup yes you can do the same for red cup but you use the function import records so it uh, for getting data into r you use export records for writing into red cup you use import records because you are importing records into red cup so yeah it's possible you can you can do that from r Over. Okay, um, I think that's it with the q and I'm trying to share my screen um, okay. so that we can conclude. Is it visible? Yeah, sure. Okay, so Thank you so much, Christopher, for the training. Gosh, it's it's funny how time runs out so fast when one is in such an exciting um, session. We are totally grateful to those who attended this session, especially in this weather. Um, it's such a gloomy day. I hope um, everyone is keeping warm. So this is the first of many collaborations between Nairobi R and our ladies that we'll be having in in the future, our goal is just to share knowledge in R with as many people um, as we can. So, if you know, if you if you are or know anyone who would be interested in speaking or facilitating a training, please send an email to Nairobi at rladies.org and or Nairobi RUG at gmail.com. Um, this session was recorded and it will be hosted on both of our YouTube channels. So Nairobi R's YouTube channel and the Our Ladies YouTube channel. We will send a follow-up email um, uh, that will have the links embedded on it. So on behalf of Nairobi R and Our Ladies organizers, we are again grateful that you attended this session and we hope to have you in our future sessions. My name is Shalmith Karaoke and I'm done speaking. Yes, Faith. Hi. Yes, Faith. I see your hand has risen.
so there's a question actually on the chat. My name is uh, Dakuo Maino. Uh, there is this guy called Jawad Ashraf, whose question has gone unanswered. Maybe I'm uh, talking on his behalf. So how do you create the R, the dot R environ? That's what you want. He wants to know. Uh, so he wants to know how to create an R dot environ file. Yes, Hello? that is so, the question. Uh, yeah, so maybe I could again share my screen briefly to show <clears throat> to show him how to do that. Uh, so, um, so if you are able to see my screen, so um, this particular code invokes automatically the creation of R dot environ. So you just type file dot edit then uh, in between uh, uh, those uh, double quotation mark uh, you put the tilde tilde sign forward slash then dot r environ so if you run this even in your computer right now it will invoke the creation of that particular r dot environ file so then when you save it now exists in your in your in your uh, in your documents so maybe uh, to even maybe make it better uh, i I have navigated to my computer uh, uh, documents. So then I'm just going through R, R, R. So it is here, if you can see it. So it is here. So it's it, you can see it's, it's been created. Sorry, we, can't, we can't see. Sorry. Uh, OK. Sorry for that. Are you able to see now? Not yet. Uh, what about? Now, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, once you invoke, once you invoke the code that I've just shown, this one here, in your computer right now, it will, it will. Uh, sorry, once you run this code, it will invoke the creation of R dot uh, dot dot R environ. So, and once that's done, depending on, uh, I think the. the usually for mo for windows it goes to my documents so if you go to my documents you will find it here so this you can see it's the, the it's it's somewhere here mine is old because i created it some time back and i just did the, i i just deleted some things from it so that i can be able to demonstrate because usually it's so full of secret stuff and the codes yeah so that's how simple you can create a, an r and dot r environ Over. Okay, uh, thank you for that, Christopher, and for an amazing um, presentation. We have learned a lot. I, yeah, um, if you have anything else to share with us, I see your hand is still up. Who, me? No, no, no. Uh, oh, awesome. I, I and do you see, I, I was. I just wanted to bring to you note the question that was not answered, but Chris has answered. So that's all. Thank you. Great. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. It has been an amazing uh, tutorial. We have learned a lot. Um, please feel free to um, leave. <laughs> I think uh, we have come to an end of to the end of the event. Here, and we look forward to you all joining us our incoming events. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you as well. Thank you. Bye, Motiso.